This is News 8 Now, this morning. This gives us an opportunity to perhaps add other drugs that may have additive mechanisms of action to actually slow down the disease process even more dramatically. We do pop-up events every once in a while at different locations around town or through La Crosse County just to help advertise what we're all about. And this is significant, it's huge. Just to get people outside and kind of remove those boundaries of, of being able to experience outdoors in all weather. It shows up that congratulations to Wayne's Foods in Luck, Wisconsin, selling a $15 million Megabox ticket. I was looking for my ticket, but I didn't have one. And that was your eye opener. Good morning, everybody, and thanks for watching News 8 Now this morning. I'm Ken Kozrowski, and that is Eric Dean. It is 6 a.m. on this Monday, January 9th. 2023. Hope you're having a good morning so far. Eric, of course, most of us in the Cooley region did not have a good night last night as the Packers, <laughs> of course, lost to the Detroit Lions to officially miss the playoffs. Of course, Derek Sibley probably in high spirits after his Dolphins barely squeaked by the Jets to clinch oh, a playoff spot. Oh, he's doing a week-long so. celebration, my friend. Yeah, so congrats to him, but in the meantime, uh, a lot of us Packer fans are kind of depressed this morning. So, Eric, Please tell us we have some mild temperatures or something to rise to uh, our mean, spirits. I mean, if you want to call upper 30s okay, then yeah. there you go. I'll take that today, but yeah. today's one of the nicer days on the 8-day because we will cool off as we go into tomorrow and then pretty some chances to pick up. Now, in terms of the short term, we do have visibility issues. Let's go ahead and hit the map here. Uh, Two-mile visibility in Black River Falls, 10 in Sparta, 5 in Roca, 5 across, 3 in Winona, 0 in Eau Claire, 5 in Ladysmith. And that visibility is going to continue to thicken as we go into the next hour or so. It will dissipate as we go into uh, the late morning, early afternoon hours. So right now we're sitting at 13 degrees. It feels like 4 out there with winds out of the south at 6 miles per hour. Puts our visibility at five miles, our dew point, our air temperature, they're very close together, so that's what happens there. In terms of temperatures, Lady Smith, good morning to you guys. You're at six degrees, 12 in La Crosse, 18 Winona, 15 Preston, 19 Decorah, 14 in Prairie du Chien, Boscobel, you're sitting at eight. So the satellite radar, you can see a little bit of cloud cover across the Cooley region. Otherwise, we see mostly clear skies. High pressure's in control right now. We are going to cool off and we're going to increase the precip chances. We'll talk about that coming up in the first one forecast in just a few minutes. Ken, over to you. All right. Thanks very much, Eric. You we'll bet. see you in a bit. On the news front this morning, the La Crosse Wafer Food Pantry held a drive through pop-up event over the weekend. Our Anna Fisher was there. The event drew quite a crowd as Sunday's event was special thanks to the excess holiday donations from local area businesses. Wafer Mobile Pantry Manager Tony Meyer says the need in La Crosse County is huge. We do pop-up events every once in a while at different locations around town or through La Crosse County just to help advertise what we're all about. And this is significant. It's huge. Meyer says Wafer is seeing between three and 400 more families a month than previous years. He hopes this special event helps spread the word to those in need. Now for this story, I'll spare you my Julie Andrews impression, but I will say the bluffs are alive with the sound of music. High school show choirs from across the Midwest came to La Crosse to compete in Viterbo's 101 show choir competition. Music professor Nancy Allen says the competition started to help high school students improve their singing technique and has only grown since. We started as a clinic as a way to help the high school groups in the area get better. And as that got going, people asked for a competition, so it turned into a competition. But it's been a terrific way for our students to interact with the young students that are attending today. The students also got the chance to perform a solo for a Viterbo professor and receive personalized feedback. In the meantime, there was plenty to celebrate in the Kickapoo Valley on Sunday for the 22nd annual Winter Festival in Lafarge. Kicked off with a race early in the morning. Now, the Kickapoo Valley Reserve is managed by both the state of Wisconsin and the Ho-Chunk Nation. Organizers say it's a wonderful opportunity for people to enjoy the natural world. Just to get people outside and kind of remove those boundaries of, of being able to experience outdoors in all weather. There was even a game called Snow Snake put on by members of the Ho-Chunk Nation. And the festival offered something for all ages, really, including ice hikes, sledding, dog races, and more. And all of it free to the community. After a busy holiday season, you and your family might be slowing down, staying in. Local restaurants 
are seeing that in their booths. We turn now to our Anna Fisher, who spoke with local restaurant staff as they push through the slowdown. As the holiday season comes to a close, local restaurants can find themselves in a bit of a lull. See how downtown restaurants are handling this change of pace that January brings. After the hustle and bustle of the holidays. Well, January, I always consider it like jumping into a cold pool because in December, everybody's celebrating and every restaurant is just packed. New Year's Eve is the big climax and then you jump into the cold pool and it's just like, oh my goodness, where did everybody go? But Piggy's owner, Chris Roderick, remains optimistic. The restaurant's salad bar is set to reopen after closing its doors during the pandemic nearly three years ago. We made the announcement we're going to do Wednesday through Friday, 11 to 1, soup and salad, and everything will be just like you remember it. And we're hoping for great things. Another local downtown favorite still recovering from the pandemic is Fazie's. Overall, I say it's affected us, but it hasn't brought us down. I know our hours aren't the same as they used to be, and that's one thing we're still trying to figure out. Fazie's employee, Rihanna Buckholt, says the best way to support local restaurants right now is through carryout. If you are thinking about going out and ordering food, instead of getting it like delivered to your house, that costs more. And it's just easier to walk in, sit down, or even get a carryout to support your local businesses and the owners. In La Crosse, I'm Anna Fisher, News 8 Now. Thanks, Anna. And of course, that's just two of many local restaurants who would probably love the support this month. In the meantime, Oscar Meyer is now recruiting the next class of drivers for its iconic Wienermobile. The drivers are called hot doggers, and along with being able to drive the Wienermobile through 20 states, they serve as an Oscar Meyer spokesperson at more than 200 events during the course of the year. Hot doggers also document their journey on social media, and the company says they're looking for graduating college seniors who have an appetite for adventure. Somebody in northwest Wisconsin is $15 million richer for guessing all six numbers of the Megabucks jackpot correctly. Wayne's Food Plus in Luck, Wisconsin, sold the winning ticket, which is by far the largest in village history. As Adam Duxter found out, it's been a battle, though, to find out the mystery of who won. One thousand one hundred nineteen people, fifteen point one million dollars, and one store manager. Somebody was lucky. Who still yeah, can't yeah. believe it? It shows up that congratulations to Wayne's Foods in Luck, Wisconsin, selling a fifteen million dollar mega box ticket. I was looking for my ticket, but I didn't have one. In a place this small, everybody knows somebody. Certainly, someone has to know the winner. My mother asked me if I bought a lottery ticket here. <laughs> And I wish I would have known because I would have tricked her, but no, I did not buy one here. Two Powerball and two Mega Millions. Unfortunately for us... I'd have so much fun giving it away. It wasn't Mary Marlette. <laughs> or... I'd leave my house up and walk away and send some postcards. This guy. <laughs> but rather... Very community-oriented. They care about each other. This village hopes their luck is just getting started. It would be nice if somebody would do something for the community a little bit to help out and maybe not like a charity thing, but just a... Uh, just kind of improve some of the businesses around here. And as great as $15 million is, let's not forget the Mega Millions drawing is currently over $900 million. So if photojournalist Tom and I aren't at work come next week, don't come looking for us. Oh, to be lucky in luck. Adam Duxter, WCCO 4 News. Now, while this is the biggest lottery win in Lux history, it doesn't mean people haven't tried their luck there before. Last year, Wisconsin Lottery sold nearly $590,000 in tickets there. That's about $500 per resident. They got lottery fever for sure. Time is now 6.08 a.m. on this Monday morning. Still ahead on your morning news, from fully automated strollers to a flying car, the newest pieces of technology set to hit the streets and shelves in the coming years. And with the increase in ingredient prices, beer lovers might have to pay more at the bar. That and more still to come after the break. For now, let's send you to break with something to put the good in your morning. And this truly is. Football fans continuing to shore their, their love and support for Buffalo Bills safety, Damar Hamlin. They are donating to his toy drive for kids. And the money has absolutely been pouring into the fundraiser since Hamlin's cardiac arrest on Monday Night Football last week. Organizers say donations have now topped eight and a half million dollars. The original goal was $2,500. Hamlin started the toy drive last year as a way to give back to his community. And organizers are thanking people who have donated for their generosity 
and compassion. We're all praying for you tomorrow. Don't go anywhere. More news ain't now this morning coming up after this. All right, take a look outside right now. We are seeing a temperature of 4 degrees. Dew point is 10. Winds right of the south at 6 miles per hour. The ambient temperature, I should say, is 13 degrees. Look at the temperature here at the TV station. A couple degrees warmer at 15. You can see on the uh, city cam, you can see the uh, smoke pushing its way from south to north, which is giving us that southerly window. Claire, good morning to you guys. You're at 12 degrees. You're seeing some patchy fog out there. Look at your visibility. Down to zero, but with the calm wind, your temperature and your feels like temperature, they're the same. 12 degrees, your dew point is sitting at 10. Here's a look at the next several hours. You will see temperatures going into the 20s till we get to the noon hour. We'll have a right around freezing by the 2 o'clock hour. Look at that temperature, 37 degrees. I'll have your full forecast coming up in just a few minutes. Mr. Kozarowski, over to you. Thanks very much, Eric. On the consumer side of things, beer drinkers are going to have to be spending more at the bar. The alcohol consulting company Bump Williams says beer prices, not including sales at bars and restaurants, have jumped 7% during the last 13 weeks of 2022. The firm said prices of some popular beers, including Bud Light, Miller Light, and Coors Light, increased even higher by 10%. Experts say inflation and the increased cost of shipping and ingredients are the cause for that increase in price. McDonald's CEO has revealed the company is planning to lay off some of its corporate staff as part of a broader strategic plan. He said some initiatives will be deprioritized or ended to help the company free up resources to invest in growth. McDonald's has thrived during the pandemic and as inflation made it more affordable than pricier restaurants. While McDonald's cuts back at the corporate level, it will accelerate development plans for new restaurants. The company plans to announce the corporate layoffs by April 3rd. The operator is no longer on the line for millions of AT&T customers. The telecommunications company says customers with digital landlines will no longer be able to dial 411 or 0 to get directory assistance. The evolution of technology has nearly completely phased out the operator with the trove of information at the ready. People with home phone landlines can still access operators. Some other carriers, including Verizon and T-Mobile, still offer the services for a fee. The Consumer Electronics Show was back in Vegas with thousands of new electronic gadgets and products being revealed, including lots of high-tech for cars of the future. Michael George gives us a look. This electric vehicle can avoid any traffic jam. The Aska A5 is a flying car that travels up to 250 miles on a single charge. This is the company's working prototype, with plans to start selling them in 2026. BMW is showing off a new concept car that talks. Right, Steve? You bet, Oliver. The vehicle is called D, which stands for Digital Emotional Experience. It not only interacts with the owner, but also changes colors, thanks to a special coating. No word on when or if it will go on sale. Strollers can also drive themselves. This one from Gluckskind has AI and sensors to avoid objects and stop on its own if it gets too far away. And after a certain period, oh, it stops it completely. Taking a stroll in these new glasses offers an augmented view of the world. The TCL Ray Neo X2 glasses can find a restaurant or show translations. L'Oreal is raising eyebrows with this high-tech device. Users take a picture of their face. The app creates a custom color, and the brow magic applies it right on the eyebrow. Ducky, what this? Ball. Uh, yes, that ball. The company Fluent Pet is helping your dog talk. Pushing a series of buttons, pets can tell owners they want a bone or to go for a walk. We find that actually when dogs kind of know that they're being understood, they're no longer wondering whether it is they actually communicated what they wanted to. There's even an app that tracks what the dog desires. So Eric and I, we've been thinking about those products quite a bit. There's a few that like sound interesting, right. but then there's a few that's just like, wouldn't common sense make that is unnecessary. I'm thinking when I'm a parent in probably a few years, 
I'm, I'm not going to trust technology to just push my child for me. I would probably right. have my hands on the stroller, so that's one. Uh, the glasses sound interesting. Probably uh, resort to a lot of headaches, if not migraines, though, with just the, the, the visual Well, if you recall overload. a few years ago, Google had the, the Google Glass that they came out with. That's right. I remember that learning about really that in college. Off. It was kind of the same thing. Yeah. The thing I'm wanting, I'm, I'm going to try to sweet talk my fiance and get into this one. I want that car. That's a good idea too, but our, our, our PA Judith was pointing out if that thing gets bumped, one panel on that thing gets pumped, the whole digital effect probably goes out and you gotta be paying thousands of dollars for all the LED fixes. Right, and I wanna see if we can somehow get in our station budget the, the little flying car thing. That'd be cool. How about that for a weather report? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> the MVP of storm runners right there. That's right. <laughs> Take a look outside right now. We have clear skies, temperature 12 degrees. Feels like four out there, winds are out of the south at six miles per hour. Look at that temperature out at the TV station. We're at 15 degrees in Eau Claire. Good morning to you guys, you're at 12 degrees. But with the calm wind, it feels like 12. Your visibility though, it's zero. So please allow yourself extra time to get to your morning destination and definitely keep those low beams on. Now in terms of the temperature, over the next several hours, we'll see temperatures staying in the teens till we get to the nine o'clock hour. We'll hover right around the double deuces. We'll go to 32 by noon, 37 by the two o'clock hour. But in terms of visibility, everybody across the board is seeing low visibility. Eau Claire, you're at zero. Five in La Crosse, five Roqua, five Prairie du Chien, six Decora, three in Preston, five up towards Ladysmith. And if you get the kiddos ready for the bus stop today, there's your forecast. We'll see a temperature of 16 degrees with partly cloudy skies. Again, patchy fog, not out of the question. And then we go into the afternoon hours by the time the kiddos come home to get ready to do their homework. Mostly cloudy skies. Temperatures will be in the mid to upper 30s. So the radar scan right now, we have a clean sweep across the area. We are seeing a little bit of cloud cover, though, across the central part of the Cooley region. So we'll pull out and take a look here at the broad perspective. We're going to see a warm front push through, which is what's going to keep the winds out of the south for today. That's what's going to allow those temperatures to stay in the mid to upper 30s. Some places, and I'm looking at you, Boscoville and Prairie du Chien, I think you guys will see temperatures very close to, if not 40. Definitely not the case now, but look at Ladysmith. You're at 6, Eau Claire's sitting at 12, 13 uh, the current temperature in La Crosse. You go west over towards Preston, 14 degrees. You go south over towards Decorah, you're at 19, 14 is the current temperature in Prairie du Chien. Boscobel, you're sitting at 8 degrees, 6 is the current temperature in Volkfield, 15 in Marshfield. Black River Falls, good morning to you guys. You're seeing a temperature of 19 degrees. So, we'll see the clouds continue as we go into the early morning hours. They'll dissipate in the afternoon and early evening hours only to fire back up again. Today, though, we'll see temperatures, like I said, in the 30s, even low 40s towards Boscobel. Prairie du Chien, I've got you at 39. Wouldn't surprise me if you hit 40. You'll see a temperature in the upper 20s, low 30s towards Ladysmith. And then for tomorrow, we'll stay partly to mostly cloudy. When you wake up in the morning, temperatures will be in the single digits and teens. Now, let's talk about the second half of the work week, because I want to keep an eye on this low pressure system as it pushes its way across the U.S. And you're sitting there thinking, OK, well, is this going to hit us? It's going to stay to the south and east, the majority of it. We may get clipped by this little guy here that's associated with it. In terms of accumulation, I don't think much of anything, maybe enough to cut the grassy surfaces. It may be a little bit of a nuisance on Thursday, but that's really about it. So we'll go to 33 on Thursday, 28 Friday, uh, upper 20s, low 30s for Saturday. And then Sunday, we rebound back into the upper 30s. That trend continues for Monday with a temperature right around 37 degrees. All right, that does it for weather. We'll be back in a few minutes, but first here's a look at this day in history. All right, here's a look at your forecast for today. We'll see temperatures going into the mid to upper 30s. 34 will be the high in Eau Claire, 39 La Crosse, 37 Viroqua, Prairie du Chien. You'll make it into the upper 30s, low 40s. Bosco Bell, I think you'll make it to 41. Prairie du Chien wouldn't surprise me if you hit 40. So here's like a sky tracker. We'll stay mostly cloudy throughout the day. As we go into the afternoon and evening hours, the clouds will dissipate only to fire back up again. But when you wake up in the morning tomorrow, temperatures will be in these single digits and teens. That does it for weather. Hey, Kate Overton, take it away, buddy. Welcome to the morning blitz. The Packers had a Sunday night battle against Detroit with this spot in the playoffs on the line, but turned out the Lions were trying to play spoiler. 
It was a chilly night at Lambeau Field. Aaron Rodgers and Matt LaFleur looking to get back to the playoffs. First drive of the game. Packer stuffed on two straight runs and then on third and goal, Rodgers buying time, but he can't hook up with A.J. Dillon there. More red zone struggles for this Green Bay offense. Mason Crosby puts this one through. It's three to zero. Later in the quarter, third and five for Green Bay. Rodgers looking, but he's going to be brought down by the rookie, Aiden Hutchinson, and that means Mason Crosby comes back out this time. The 49-yard attempt is good, and it's six to three. And then at the beginning of the second quarter, it's Crosby again from 48 yards out. That's money. It's 9-3 Green Bay. Then with two seconds on the clock, Detroit ends the half with a field goal of their own. So we go into halftime, Green Bay up 9-6. We have no touchdowns in the first half. To the second half, after a missed Green Bay field goal, the Lions taking a shot, Jared Goff going deep, and that's Khalif Raymond making the grab at the one-yard line, and that sets up Jamal Williams taking the handoff from one yard out. The Lions take a 13-9 lead. Packers looking for an answer inside the 15. Rodgers hits Alan Lazard in the back of the end zone. They finally get a touchdown and have the lead up three. But don't celebrate just yet. The Lions on third and goal give it to Williams. And he's in again. That gives Detroit a 20 to 16 lead. Green Bay looking for some magic. Just under four minutes to go. Rodgers going deep, but that ball is up for grabs. Kirby Joseph comes down with it. A killer turnover for the pack as the Lions manage to run down the clock and win the ball game. 20 to 16 was the final. The Packers are eliminated from the playoffs. Now, of course, there's going to be a ton of rumors about Rodgers retiring. It's kind of what happens when you're 39 years old. But we'll be sure to keep you updated on all things Rodgers and all things Packers as the season comes to a close. We'll have more later this evening. But for now, that's all for sports. We'll be right back. Welcome back to News 8 Now. This morning, Brazil is recovering from a storm of protesters of government buildings in the capital on Sunday. Hundreds of pro-Bolsonaro supporters pro broke into at least three institutions, including the presidential palace. The incident occurring one week after Luis Silva was sworn in as Brazil's president, Bolsonaro supporters claiming election fraud. In response to the protest, Bolsonaro addressed the incident, tweeting that peaceful demonstrations were, quote, part of democracy. Fifteen rounds of voting, four days of ballots, and the U.S. House finally has a new speaker. Early Saturday, Congressman Kevin McCarthy secured enough Republican support to become the next Speaker of the House. McCarthy received 216 votes in favor of his bid, with six Republicans voting present. Saturday's vote put an end to a chaotic week that saw 14 failed attempts to get 218 GOP lawmakers to unite around McCarthy. With a new Speaker chosen, the House can now swear in new members, like Wisconsin's 3rd District Representative Derek Van Orden. President Joe Biden is in Mexico City, where he will take part in the North American Leaders Summit. The president is expected to discuss immigration matters with the leaders of Mexico and Canada. It's a concern that has both Republicans and Democrats calling for action. It comes as the administration wrestled with a constant influx of migrants, which is overwhelming federal and local resources. Mr. Biden toured the U.S. border with Mexico in the major stress point of El Paso, Texas, just yesterday. A member of the Minnesota Air National Guard became the first Air Guard flight nurse in the country to receive the Distinguished Flying Cross Medal. Major Katie Lunning was among the first members of a critical air care transport team to arrive at the Kabul airport after a suicide bomber caused massive casualties. Well, I was very surprised um, and just honored to represent nursing. I uh, know that there's been so many nurses that have done amazing things and just really honored to represent the Minnesota National Guard. Her actions came during the pullout of American forces in Afghanistan in August of 2021. Under constant fire, Katie led her team to evacuate 22 multinational and joint service wounded and kept them alive during the eight-hour flight to a medical facility. It was the single largest aeromedical evacuation airlift in Kabul Coalition Hospital history. Emergency rooms nationwide are seeing a huge increase in opioid overdoses. UW Health estimates that in 2022, nearly 583 people arrived for care related to an opioid overdose. ERs are designed to handle overdoses and does take a toll on everyone involved. One UW expert says people are often unaware how strong those drugs can be. People who are using drugs may not be aware that the substances they're using could have fentanyl in them, uh, which results in a much higher rate of uh, overdose due to the significant increased potency. UW hopes to help support more people who struggle with substance use disorders gain access to treatment. 
A new drug could lead to positive progress in the fight against Alzheimer's. The FDA has granted accelerated approval to a medication that could slow the disease's progress. It's called lecanemab, and Mayo Clinic Health System experts say the drug shows great promise. Experts say the success of the drug could also help pave the way for other Alzheimer's treatments. This gives us an opportunity to perhaps add other drugs that may have additive mechanisms of action to actually slow down the disease process even more dramatically. That drug will be submitted to the FDA later this year for full approval. Doctors add this treatment is only for those who have mild cognitive impairment or mild dementia. If you test positive for COVID-19, chances are you can recover at home. However, Mayo Clinic Health System doctors say staying on top of your symptoms is important. Most COVID symptoms are generally mild and often feel like the flu or a nasty cold. If you do test positive for COVID, doctors recommend staying home for at least five days, staying hydrated, and avoid coming into contact with other people. Doctors say if you start having chest pains, you should seek medical attention immediately. More than 1,000 CNH industrial workers are still on strike in Iowa and Wisconsin after rejecting the, quote, last, best, and final offer from the maker of construction and agriculture equipment. Now, this was the first vote on an offer since the workers walked off the job months ago. Workers at the plants in both states previously rejected a three-year deal that included 18.5% raises at the beginning of the strike. Wisconsin Governor Tony Evers has announced that he will soon ban the use of TikTok on state phones, joining the growing number of states that are banning the popular social media app. Evers says there will be more details on the ban released later this week, but he said the decision came after he consulted with the FBI and emergency management officials. There's a new sheriff in town, and she's breaking the glass ceiling in Wisconsin. Though she's been on the job since October, she was publicly sworn in yesterday. Stephanie Rodriguez was there for the moment she took her oath of office. Sheriff Danita Ball made history by becoming the first Milwaukee County female sheriff and by becoming the first black female sheriff in Wisconsin history. To the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. A celebratory high five for Sheriff Danita Ball. That's my sheriff. Leaving her name in the history books. For the first time in over 187 years, a woman has been elected sheriff. The importance of the moment, her moment, not lost on our new sheriff. There were other people that came before me who paved the way so I can stand on this stage. For one woman, the great niece of Milwaukee's first black police officer, seeing a friend make history was unforgettable. I have a lot of um, pride and respect for, for that because I know for Sheriff Ball, she is a woman who has a heart of service. Here's a live look at City Cam. You can see it's just downright chilly uh, out there. We are seeing temperatures right around 12, 13 degrees. You can see here in the City Cam uh, the smoke here. You can see it's uh, going from south to north. That's because we had that southerly wind in place. So we're at 13 degrees. That feels like four because wind is out of the south at six miles per hour. Our dew point is at 10. So what that's telling me is that visibility is low across portions of the Cooley region, especially in Eau Claire. You can see it's just soupy out there. Look at that temperature, 12, dew points at 10. Your visibility, it's at zero. Your temperature and your feels like temperature, they're the same because we have that calm wind in place. So here's a look at your bus stop forecast. If you get the kiddos off to school, we'll see a temperature right around 15 degrees. Again, partly cloudy skies, patchy fog will be the main contender. By the time they come home to do their homework, See temperatures in the mid to upper 30s with mostly cloudy skies. Now, temperatures across the area in these single digits and teens. Lady Smith, you're at 5, 12 in Eau Claire, 13 in La Crosse, 10 cooler in Sparta. Basketball, good morning to you guys. You're at 8 degrees, 15 is the current temperature in Prairie to Sheen. But you factor in that feels like temperature, the majority of us feel like temperatures are in the single digits. 7 in Lady Smith, 6 in Rochester, 9 in Viroqua, 8 and Boscobel. So we'll see temperatures going into the teens until we get to about the 10 o'clock hour. We'll see temperatures in the mid 20s. We'll hover right around freezing by the lunch hour and then upper 30s as we go into the middle part of the afternoon. We have a clean sweep on the radar skin right now. This is going to get a break for today. The big story right now is that fog, that pesky fog that's just sitting here and lingering for the next several hours. The reason why we're going to see temperatures in the 30s 
is this guy right here, this warm front. This is going to push its way up and over. It's going to allow temperatures to warm up with highs in the 30s and 40s, but it's not going to last. We will cool off as we go into your Tuesday. So for today, we'll see a little bit of cloud cover. It will dissipate in the afternoon and early evening hours, only to fire back up again in the evening and overnight hours. Highs today. There you go. Low 30s over towards Ladysmith, otherwise mid to upper 30s, even low 40s across the majority of the Cooley region. Would not surprise me to see uh, Prairie de Chine and Boscobel hit 40. As we go into your Tuesday, we'll start the day off much like today with a little bit of fog. We'll see mostly cloudy skies when you wake up in the morning, though. Temperatures again will be in the single digits and teens. Matter of fact, six will be the overnight low in Ladysmith, eight in Eau Claire, 18 in Winona. So let's talk about Wednesday and Thursday. So you see this low pressure system right here. This is going to push its way up and over across the nation's midsection. You're looking at this here thinking, oh, Eric, is it going to hit us? This won't. This will. This little area right here, I'm going to keep an eye on. We'll get clipped by maybe the back end of this. In terms of accumulation, I don't think it's going to be much of anything. I think it may be enough to just disturb us. But in terms of accumulation, not much. Uh, 31 for Tuesday, 36 for Wednesday. We'll cool off again for Thursday. Upper 20s for Friday. We'll have a right around freezing for Saturday. Look at Sunday. We will go to 38 degrees. Monday, we go to 37 degrees with a shower chance. So again, we're going to keep an eye on Wednesday and Thursday. Ken, take it away. Thanks, Eric. And our buzz report this morning, Jennifer Shaw of the Real Housewives of Salt Lake City will spend six and a half years in prison for helping to defraud thousands of people nationwide in a telemarketing scam. On Friday, Shaw sobbed as she apologized for her crimes prior to the announcement of the sentence in a New York courtroom. Authorities said the fraud stretched from 2012 to March 2021. She pledged to pay six and a half million dollars in restitution and forfeiture when she gets out of prison. and She apologized to everyone cheated by the fraud. Even before Prince Harry's book release, some British media were already revealing bombshell details from it. From a scuffle with his brother Prince William to Harry's time in the military, leaked details are making Spare, Prince Harry's book, already highly sought before its release. Scheduled to be released tomorrow, Spare offers insight into life in the royal family. Time is now 6.48, and Eric, let's head to break with today's Look Who's Eight. Hey, let's do it. First of all, happy eight months to Lakin. Lakin loves bananas. Hey, same here. <laughs> and cruising around in his walker. Happy, happy birthday. Eighth to eighth to yeah. Lakin. That's right. And a happy eighth birthday to Claire. She loves to spend time with her friends and family and loves gymnastics. Happy eighth birthday to June. June likes to spend time with her two brothers and also enjoys gymnastics. A happy 18th birthday to Caden. Caden's looking forward to graduating high school and beginning a career in plumbing. And happy 80th birthday to Edith. Edith enjoys spending time with her family and feeding the birds outside. Happy birthday, Edith. If you know a special someone turning 8 months, 8 years, 18, 80, or 88 years old soon, we would love to feature them. Hey, do us a favor. Upload their photo to our website, news8000.com, and look for the Submit Pictures button under the uh, Home tab on our website. All right, stay with us. We have everything you need to know today in 5 minutes or less. Your Morning News Now is coming up next. It is 6.52, time for your morning news now. A new drug could lead to positive progress in the fight against Alzheimer's. The FDA has granted accelerated approval to a medication that could slow the disease's progress. It's called lecanemab, and Mayo Clinic Health System experts say the drug shows great promise. Experts say the success of the drug could also help pave the way for other Alzheimer's treatments. This gives us an opportunity to perhaps add other drugs that may have additive mechanisms of action to actually slow down the disease process even more dramatically. The drug will be submitted to the FDA later this year for full approval. Doctors add that this treatment is only for those who have mild cognitive impairment or mild dementia. The La Crosse Wafer Food Pantry held a drive through pop-up event over the weekend. Our own Anna Fisher was there and says the event drew quite a crowd as the event was special thanks to the excess holiday donations from area businesses. Wafer Mobile Pantry Manager Tony Meyer says the need is huge in La Crosse County. We do pop-up events every once in a while at different locations around town or through La Crosse County just to help advertise what we're all about. And this is significant. It's huge.
Wrestling teams from across the country hit the mats at the Lacrosse Center over the weekend for the 20th annual The Clash, attracting high school teams from Minnesota and Wisconsin, and this year also teams from Connecticut, Arizona, and California. This is the first year The Clash also included a girls team in singles bracket. An organizer says girls wrestling is exploding in popularity. I think the last two years we've seen a huge boom in the women's wrestling, especially at the high school and uh, amateur levels. So, I mean, the girls are seeing that on, you know, social media and all over the place. The Olympics were hugely popular. Now, there were eight girls teams competing and 32 boys teams for the men's. St. Michael High School from Albertville, Minnesota took home the title. Sunday, the bluffs were alive with the sound of music. High school show choirs from across the Midwest came to lacrosse to compete in Viterbo's 101 show choir competition. Music professor Nancy Allen says the competition started to help high school students improve their singing technique and has only grown since. We started as a clinic as a way to help the high school groups in the area get better. And as that got going, people asked for a competition, so it turned into a competition. But it's been a terrific way for our students to interact with the young students that are attending today. Students also got the chance to perform a solo for a Viterbo professor and receive personal feedback. And there was plenty to celebrate in the Kickapoo Valley. It was the 22nd annual Winter Festival in the Farge, kicking off with an, a race early in the morning. Now, the Kickapoo Valley Reserve is managed by the state of Wisconsin and the Ho-Chunk Nation. Organizers say it's a wonderful opportunity for people to enjoy the natural world. Just to get people outside and kind of remove those boundaries of, of being able to experience outdoors in all weather. The festival offered something for all ages, including ice hikes, sledding, dog races, and more, and the PS de Resistance. It was all free to the community. And here's a look at your first one forecast for today. We'll see temperatures in the mid to upper 30s. Patchy fog will be the main story this morning. Otherwise, we're going to stay partly cloudy until we go into the evening and overnight hours. As we head into the evening hours, we'll stay mostly cloudy with temperatures going into the 30s. And real quick, that next eight days, there you go. We go to 31 tomorrow, mid 30s for Wednesday and Thursday with precip chances. And then this weekend, 32 for Saturday, 38 for Sunday. All right, not looking too bad. Car wash weather. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I know my car desperately needs it. Yeah, I think I got wash bills on Saturday. <laughs> that comes with the job? It's part of my contract. Yeah. Is it really? It is. Oh, Bill's sneaky with Well, normally contract. it's Derek, but he's on vacation, uh, so I got to okay. fill in. There. I got you. <laughs> That's Eric Dean. We'll be seeing him all week long. Thanks so much for joining us this morning, and we'll see you tomorrow.